Welcome everybody to Bite Down Dental Technology with Dr. Kyle Stanley. I am Dr. Kyle Stanley and today I'm really excited. We've got one of my good friends, Dr. Lou Graham on. Lou is an internationally recognized speaker, speaks all around the world all the time, everything from dental technology to conservative dentistry, implants, laser dentistry. So Lou, thanks for coming on. It's a pleasure to have you. My pleasure. So I think today will be great because forget the speaker part. I'm still a clinician who runs a multi-specialty practice in Chicago. And I think after 35 years, we've had enough pearls and failures. So let, let's kick it off and I'll let you take over. and Let's go. I love that. Yeah. So, you know, having years of experience, that's what people want to hear about. Um, why don't you give us a quick intro, you know, how long you've been practicing, uh, a little bit more about your multi-specialty practice. Just give a quick intro of who you are. Okay. So I opened this practice before many people uh, listening were born. I opened this in 85. And we think about technology in 85. It was 2D imaging and explorers, panorexes, not even digital. The practice has expanded to the point where we have so much technology in it today to make us and allow us to run far more efficiently. And, and when I say that, Kyle, I have a periodontist, an endodontist, a prosthodontist. So all the procedures along with three GPs, we can all integrate and really coordinate much better care in the practice that way. And so that's what I define as my multi-specialty care office. Yeah, I love that. And that's so rare to have that, you know, that um, yeah. that truly interdisciplinary treatment planning doesn't happen very often. You know, something that, of course, places like the Seattle Study Club and Spear and Coist, things that they teach, really cool to see it happening in real life in your practice. Yeah, it is. It's convenient, too, right? Yeah, oh, for sure. So the topic that I want to speak to you about is trust with our patients. And just to introduce this topic, our profession is one of the least trustworthy professions when you, you know, look at surveys. I mean, we, we don't rank very high. People think us dentists are here to rip you off, to uh, you know, get you to do treatments that don't need to happen. And that's hard to hear. You know, from us dentists, you and I, we have a lot of friends that are dentists. Most dentists I know, I mean, almost every dentist I know is a trustworthy, good, able, you know, men and women that are just working their butts off to try to support their families and, and do what they love. So I'd love to hear your initial thoughts on this topic. I, I would tell you that to me, Trust is the reason I, I do not take PPOs. It's a crazy statement, but I think trust is everything. If, if you get a patient from, let's just say Google, and versus a referral, Kyle, from somebody who's directly referring them to you, you automatically have built in trust. I mean, you must see the same in your practice. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, you know, my practice too, similar to yours, is that we're out of network. And so someone referring someone else, they're not referring them simply because we're going to take their insurance. It's because they, they have been happy with the treatment and the relationships that we've been able to build, build over time. Agreed. Yeah. And, and it's interesting, you know, one of the biggest issues with new patients is trust. And then it's trust and money. And you know what I mean, money. And so like we, we instituted six years ago an in-office dental plan that includes all the preventive things we want. So if diagnostically, I need transillumination. And whether it's Neri with CarryView or Neri with my new iTero 5D, everything is kind of included, but I'm taking that trust factor and the mystery of fees and saying, this is how we've standardized it in our practice for all our patients. So I do think trust runs deep in so many different ways. Yeah, you know, you bring up a good point. Um, people get emotional with two things. 
all right? Especially in our practice, money and discomfort or pain. And let's be honest, you know, dentistry is relatively expensive. You know, when you think about other things that consumers may be buying, it's relatively expensive. And as much as we make it, uh, you know, more comfortable with newer techniques and technologies, it's difficult to sit there with your mouth open. And of course, no one wants to get injections and et cetera, et cetera. So you've mentioned a few, but what kind of technology have you incorporated, you know, let's say over the last five years that has helped you in building trust and having better experiences with your patients? So my initial exam has changed so much. My initial exam, uh, we have an intro form. So I start to understand what the patient's concerns are. But every new patient pretty much gets what I call diagnostically customized uh, information. So routinely, I'm taking either bite wings and a cone beam on every new patient. While I'm reading the cone beam, my assistant is digitally scanning the patient so I can walk them through an intraoral like view of their mouth. We're integrating a new technology called Smart Mirror, which is like a video feed of a patient holding an iPad. And when I walk into a room, you have your Itero up, you have your comb beam up, you have all the different imaging up. And I think it's not to overwhelm a patient, it's to really guide a patient into understanding what's going on in their mouth. Yeah, I think the hard part for many of our patients is being overwhelmed by, and, and maybe not being overwhelmed, but not understanding the process. It's kind of like, you know, I love cars. I have a car on my lapel pin up here. But if my, if my mechanic says I need new brakes, they can even show me the brakes. I have no idea what I'm looking at. And I think it's similar to, um, and that's why I love that you're using 3D and I know you're using some AI as well. Right. To be able to um, make it easier for the patients to see what we see. You know, you and I look at a, at a, at a bite wing, immediately we see the interproximal caries, you know, we see open margin, whatever, we see spacing issues. But being able to highlight that with different technology, like I know you're using the uh, Itero 5D, they have that new, is it called Carry View? It's near, it's their Neary, it's, yes, it's Neary to them, yes. Yeah, right. And you know, stuff like that is so easy. Look at this thing in red, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is red, look at this. Or like, um, you know, with, with some of the products from Pearl, it's like, here's a bite wing. This square is where the carries are. And, as a consumer, I think I want that. And, and our patients build trust with that. Oh, because it's, yeah, for sure. It's, um, it's like I always say, it's like, I don't just think you have something. This third-party system, whatever it is, would agree. And because of that, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into it more. Well, and, well let's talk about this because you brought up cars and AI. So let's, so I just brought my car into a dealer, which is always a problem. And they come out and they give me a quote. And it was just like being a dental patient. He goes, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. And I'm like this, but mm, the car drives fine. <laughs> so the same goes when I'm showing a patient pre-pearl in my practice, if I show a patient, here's a cavity, here's this, here's bone loss, and they go, I don't, I think, and this is terrible to say, I think they trust the non-subjective nature of a computer with AI as almost a confirmation, and I need that confirmation of many patients to reaffirm the trust that they have to have in me. I know it sounds crazy, yeah. but I, I'm i telling you, my hygienists, they feel the same way. If they can, The patient can see this and goes, that, is that some gingival tartar that looks like a white dot? How do I know what that is? <laughs> but AI is confirming that. I do think that helps build trust. Yeah, especially in those new patients. You know, you and I, uh, we practiced for a while. 
once once you build trust with a patient, they've got it. You know, they come in two years later, you tell them they need a filling, they do it because we've built that. Right. With new patients, and I love this this car topic we're getting on too, because I'm thinking that if I went and they told me I needed new brakes and they said this third party unbiased AI system also agrees with me, I would be more likely to do that. Exactly. And it's interesting that you said that too, that they're more likely to trust them than us. And a lot of that comes from, I think, the negative connotation, the negative um, news and media about dentists, right? They focus so much on when things are bad in the dental office and not the things that we see every day. You know, we can change people's lives. We give them their smile back. We allow them to start dating again, to smile at their kid's wedding. I mean, all this amazing stuff that we see on a daily basis never gets covered in the media. So people come in with this, um, this negative view on us and we almost have to start behind the eight ball. And I love that you said that, that, you know, and, unbiased system can help the patient have some trust in us. It's so interesting to think about. Yeah, I I would say it especially, I don't believe, I'm going to just say this, people of my generation and older, I don't think they need AI. I think that's a trust generation. I think the younger generations that are brought up computer social, all this other outside, we'll say static, outside clutter of, we'll call noise. I think those are the individuals who more than likely are going on the internet to fact check anything I've said. And that's how I see AI coming in and kind of being like my buddy behind my back going, okay, this is, let's double check this and let's see what the computer says because in essence, that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm relying on that computer to double check. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting topic too, the different generations and how people think. So okay. one, um, one thing that I've noticed in, um, in certain practices, and I've worked in a lot of practices before I ended up um, buying my practice, was how staff members talk about the doctor when the doctor's not around. <laughs> Two patients specifically. Can you comment on that at all? I have to hear. I, I just want to make sure my staff isn't listening um, <laughs> or my team. Um, I, I will say, let, let me just reflect on this. I will absolutely say that a well-run office, the team is 100% behind their doctor. And I would say that does happen in the majority of practices. Unfortunately, there are those practices and you can't control them where team members, they are not in sync with their doctors in a full, in a, maybe the philosophy of care of the practice, or they're just not supportive. And, and I think that really becomes an issue in a practice today, to be honest. You can't have that in a practice. It's, it's death to a practice. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, you know, I've, I've seen um, from a good side, you know, the patient comes in and you may have done an exam on the patient and then they go to the hygienist directly afterwards, right? When you start hearing things like the pa- the, the hygienist saying like, wow, you're so, I, I'm, I'm so happy that you came in here. Dr. Graham is just like at the top of his game. He's done such cool stuff. And, yeah. you know, we've got all the newest techniques here and he's just such a nice person. And, you know, I know his, his, his daughter and his son and that is it's like it's like you don't talk good about yourself and someone else talks good about you how much more valuable that is and for a new patient i mean you know this sometimes our patients trust the hygienist more than they trust the dentist because oftentimes they spend more time with the hygienist and they're talking about you know different things and what you do today and you know oh you got a new car that's so cool oh your kid's playing soccer they really create uh, bonds with our team members and it shows how our team members trusting us makes our patients then trust our team. Oh, and I think every team member, the assistant, you walk out of the room, they have to be reaffirming. There's no doubt about it. I, I do think beyond what you just said, I couldn't agree more. I think the study said if a patient's in your practice 10 years, 
they will have seen the hygienist 87 percent of the time <laughs> and the dentist 13 percent Wow. So you are absolutely spot on. You want that hygienist to have a, kind of a glowing respect as you should have for he or her mm -hmm. or he or yep. she. Yep, that's exactly right. Uh, what other new technology are you excited about? What, you know, whether it relates to patient trust or not, because I know you're you're on the pulse of the newest stuff coming out or what just came out. So I, I'm very excited, obviously, about Smart Mirror. It's a mirror that is it has LEDs circling it. It has a microchip video camera right in the middle of the mirror. So you can be working, seeing everything illuminated and everything's magnified like 10 or 20 X. It's also a great way for you to talk to a patient, so to speak, because they can literally be holding an iPad and you're walking through. I love that. And it's voice activated. The handle is voice activated. It's limitless what Smart Mirror will do. But I, I would also tell you, and this would be great for us to chat about, I was on the phone yesterday talking with SmileSnap. I think initial visits are gonna turn into tele-dentistry initial visits where they take six or eight pictures, they fill out forms, and Kyle, I don't wanna see a new patient unless they're committed to be a new patient I'd rather take 10 minutes and do a tele-dentistry because I spend an hour on an exam. And Same here. I, I want them already convinced before they come in. So I look at like a smile snap. But I also would tell you like companies like Bristle out there, this is a, they test all the genome bacteria in your mouth and give you percentages of risks of caries and and um, periodontal disease and systemic issues all related. So I do think, oh God, you can go on and on with this. There's so much that's gonna change in our practices. I see AI as a natural fit because we've been 2D forever. And I think 2D involves a lot of missing things, but I see a lot of continued advancements in making our practices more efficient. Uh, and more treatment plans being accepted because of better communication. Yeah, let's talk about two things that you just mentioned, and then okay. we'll wrap it up in a few minutes. Okay. Um, that first initial e-visit. One of my one of my good friends works for uh, Kaiser Permanente. He's a foot and ankle surgeon, and they talk yeah. about e-visits. And I think that's so true. Once we get the technology, and most of it is out there. You know, it's it's getting it to the patient or making it affordable enough to where we can basically have a virtual patient on our computer, Yeah. how much easier that will be. You know, the patient is in a comfortable position. A lot of our patients come in with um, dental fear, right? Anxiety from just coming yeah. into the practice. They can be in a comfortable place at their home or office and have a conversation, but at a, in a place where we can evaluate, you know, do they need ortho? How's their bite? Um, like you're saying with their their bacteria, you know, the bacteria in their mouth. That's a huge topic that I always talk about when, when talking about AI is yeah. why aren't we taking this into account? Right. You know, and it's probably the easy access to it and the, you know, low cost. Maybe it was too expensive before, or too time consuming. But think if that becomes on our initial intake forms, right? I'm, you know, I'm a 42-year-old female, I have diabetes. And I have, you know, actinomyces, et cetera, et cetera. That changes how we make absolutely. And we may think when you take into account big data, we may find these trends where we say, hey, I'm not going to use this specific composite because of this genetic factor that this patient has. Or I might do an inlay instead of a crown on this patient because of the cross-section of their uh, masseter. There's so many of these other factors that we just haven't even incorporated into dentistry yet. And, and, and I think a lot of this, you know, I, I think dentistry in my lifetime is one of the most subjective things in the world. I could put up an image when I'm lecturing or teaching and I go across the room and you get 20 different opinions about one tooth. <laughs> and I think the more information will drive less subjectivity 
and allow us to treat patients with, I think, more certainty and outcomes than we presently do today. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. I think that's that's a great finish for today. Um, you know, you're on the pulse of what's happening in dentistry, all the newest stuff. I think it's an exciting time to be in dentistry right now, whether you're, you know, my dad who just retired after 45 years or whether you just came out of dental school. It is really a cool time to be in dentistry. Like you said, things are getting more efficient. Things are getting less costly, less discomfort for our patients, more, um, more truthful, I think, coming out with, you know, just fact driven and research driven. So any final thoughts? You know, not only do I agree, so like as the founder of Catapult, like we just got a project called Lumacare. And imagine taking a mouth rinse and after spitting it out, 30 seconds, you take your, you know, you take your, uh, your LED light and you're looking around the oral cavity and anything demineralized with early, early enamel breakdown lights up in yellow. I mean, where do you get this kind of stuff? That's where I think we'll be going for better treatments, more prevention. And uh, look, I hope we chat again because I think this is the kind of topic we could talk endlessly on. Yeah, Lou, it's been really great having you on. Uh, you and I could talk for hours about yeah. this stuff. We're going to have to get you back on to uh, continue this conversation. But uh, it's been a pleasure having you. And thanks, everybody, for coming today to Bite Down Dental Technology with Dr. Kyle Stanley. We'll see you next time.